There's only one version of this SUV that I think would be the right car for me and my family. I wonder if it's the same one that'd be the right car for you and yours. G'day, I'm Matt, and this is the Hyundai Tucson, which is now Hyundai's bread and butter. This is the best-selling Hyundai in Australia at the time we're filming this, having taken over from the i30. Now, Hyundai must be really happy about that because this costs a lot more than an i30, and that means it's more profitable than an i30. But we're not here to talk profit and loss. We're here to talk about whether this is the right car for you. Thanks for watching. It does help a lot every single minute that you watch helps this channel grow even more. And if you keep watching, I'm gonna bring you even more new content. You have to do that by hitting subscribe and the bell icon though. Thanks. The Hyundai Tucson range is three models deep. There's the entry level Tucson, which is just called Tucson. And then there's the Elite mid-spec model and the top spec Highlander. Now, I'm not gonna go through all the nitty gritty details of each of those variants here, but I am gonna go over some of the highlight points that you need to know. Starting at the bottom, there's the Tucson, which has 17 inch alloy wheels. It's got an eight inch touchscreen media system with wireless Apple CarPlay. It's got cloth interior trim. It gets LED daytime running lights, but halogen headlamps. And it feels kind of like the price that you're paying. It's not a very expensive midsize SUV, and it's only available with one engine, the two liter petrol, which isn't fantastic. There are three different engine options available for the Elite. We'll explore those in a bit more detail coming up but you need to know that it gets 18 inch alloy wheels, a leather accented interior, dual zone climate control, a bigger touchscreen with sat nav, but wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And it feels like the money that you're paying for it. I reckon it's worth the price jump. And at the top of the range is the Highlander, which is the one that a lot of people are drawn to because it has the most luxurious feeling interior and it has 19 inch alloy wheels as standard. It also gets standard things like LED headlights and then there's the M-Line package. Now it adds a bunch of sporty looking extras as you can see on this car, cause it's got it, including a body kit, different wheels and different interior stuff as well. Nice seats on the M-Line versions. See the prices on your screen for that. I think that the M-Line package is a nice upgrade for people who want to have something that looks and feels just a little bit sportier. The first one high on my list is the Toyota RAV4 high on everyone's list it seems the wait times for that vehicle are extensive uh, and that's because it comes with the choice of petrol and hybrid and the hybrid is available in front wheel drive or all wheel drive so it really does tick a lot of boxes it's super efficient in real world driving and well packaged as well so it's a very very competitive and compelling family mid-size suv a good alternative to that is the subaru forester Bit of an unsung hero when it comes to mid-size SUV practicality, space, and thoughtfulness. It's very, very roomy and very comfy as well. Don't bother with the hybrid of it though. It's not worth the money. For a lot of families, the Hyundai Tucson is gonna be the right size of mid-size SUV. That might sound weird, but it is not too big of a small SUV and not too small of a big SUV, if you get my meaning. It's 4.6 meters long, so not as big as some of those other five or seven seat SUVs, but it doesn't come with the option of seven seats. So what that means is that you get big practicality in the back seat, which I'll show you in a sec, but also a big boot. Let's have a look. There's one thing I just want to call out before I open the boot and show you inside. There's no rear wiper, right? Well, there is. It's hidden up under here, under the spoiler. I think that's a really nice design touch. Anyway, let's get into the boot. It is a pretty big boot. 539 litres is what Hyundai says you can fit in here. That's enough to fit a pram, um, some shopping bags, or maybe even like a weekend's worth of luggage for a family of four. It is a pretty roomy boot, there's no doubt about that. And surprisingly, Hyundai has managed to fit a full-size alloy spare wheel under the boot floor. Yeah, pretty neat. One thing though, you have to buy the Highlander to get the electric boot, which is a bit rich. I need to make it clear first and foremost that the inline versions of the Tucson might not necessarily be representative of what you will get if you don't buy the inline pack. So obviously you get N seats, these ones here, they've got this microfiber finish on them uh, with leatherish bits around the edges. It is a very comfortable and supportive seat for a sports seat. 
Um, there's also this trim piece along the dash here. There's a fabric that runs all the way around the edge here, but on this uh, endline version, it gets a cross hatch pattern thing, which I just think looks quite interesting. I'm not a huge fan of the fact that you get the black headliner. I think that it feels a bit too cocooned in here and it also makes it feel hotter. And it's a hot day today in case you can't tell and it's feeling very hot in this car. So ignoring the endline package, let's talk about the interior of this Tucson. So as I said, this is the elite grade. You get twin 10.25 inch screens, which is nice. There's sat nav, wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto though. If you choose the base model grade, you get wireless Apple CarPlay, and there's also no sat-nav on that version. Um, what I'm not so fond of is this screen and the sort of haptic touchpad layout below it. It's not physical buttons, um, and that can mean that it can be a little bit tricky to actually trigger what you want while you're driving. A lot of brands are moving towards everything through a touchscreen. This is like one step not as bad as that, but it's still annoying. So that might be something you want to check out if you are looking at a Tucson. Let's talk storage. There's a pair of cup holders between the front seats. You get bottle holders in the doors as well. There's a storage section in front of this shifter area where you could put a phone or wallet or keys or whatever it may be. There's also a covered center storage bin here as well. It's not too bad for storage. It's fairly practical in terms of the space utilization and it's pretty comfy. Let's check out the back seat. If you are after a very roomy, very spacious second row experience in a midsize SUV, the Tucson is going to deliver. It's got heaps of space back here. This seat is set for me at 182 centimeters or six foot. Heaps of knee room, heaps of foot room, lots of headroom, and it is a very comfortable back seat as well. There's a flip down armrest with cup holders if you need those for storage. There's also a pair of bottle holders in the doors and mesh map pockets as well. So the thing about mesh map pockets is things can fall through, but I like the fact that they're hard plastic backs on the seats. So if you have little kids, they can kick away to their heart's content and not damage anything. They might scuff it, but it's not gonna cause serious damage. If you've got kids, there are ISOFIX child seat points in the outboard seats, three top tether points as well. There are rear seat air vents, USB ports, it's a pretty comfy and pretty enjoyable backseat experience, but there's halogen lights for the map lights all around, which just dulls the ambience a little bit. This might sound a bit complex, but bear with me. There's a fair bit to cover when it comes to engines available in the Tucson range. The entry level one is a two liter non-turbocharged petrol four cylinder, and the outputs for it, um, well, they're best described as modest, and so is the performance, if I'm honest. It's got a six-speed auto, it's front-wheel drive, and it's available across the entire Tucson range. I wouldn't choose it, though. Um, then there's the 1.6-litre turbocharged four-cylinder petrol engine, which adds a seven-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission and all-wheel drive. It's definitely a peppy thing at speed, but it can be a bit of a pain in the bum when it comes to urban driving with that transmission. I wouldn't choose it either. In fact, the engine I would choose is this one, the two liter turbo diesel. It's got big power and torque outputs for a car of this size, and it does feel like it's up for the job. It's a very punchy and refined diesel engine for this class of car. Sure, it's not the most forward thinking, but it does offer some pretty good stuff. It's got an eight speed automatic, and it comes with all wheel drive as standard. So there you have it, choose the diesel. The Hyundai Tucson doesn't set any new standards in terms of drivability, but it is a very livable and mostly comfortable car in most situations. The suspension is mostly pretty good. It can feel a lot of the sharp edges in the road, especially if you choose one of the versions of the Tucson with 19 inch wheels, which you'll get if you choose the N-Line, as I mentioned. And it is definitely mostly good when it comes to the drive experience. The steering is mostly pretty good. It can be a little bit light at times, but that's less of an issue. Again, if you choose a version that's got the 19 inch wheels with the more aggressive tires, then it isn't that big of a concern. I have driven the other versions of the Tucson as well. This isn't just me saying that the diesel's great because it is. Uh, I've also driven the petrol two liter, which I think is almost to the point of feeling underpowered at times because it can be quite lethargic in its reactions. 
And then there's the turbocharged petrol version, which can be good at speed. It's just that at low speeds, like in stop-start driving at traffic lights or in traffic jams or just around town, it can be a bit frustrating. The reason that it's frustrating is the dual clutch automatic transmission, which is lurchy and hesitant and annoying to live with. This one's the diesel, the one I would choose because it has the most progressive and powerful and linear and likable engine of the bunch. That's because it has so much more torque than the other vehicles in this range and it just means that it's easier to live with. All in all, I think the Tucson is a pretty good everyday driver's car. It's comfortable on the highway, it's comfortable at urban speeds, and the diesel just makes the thing a whole lot better, if you ask me. Let's talk efficiency. There's gonna be a few numbers coming at you in this section of the review, but just know this, the diesel is gonna be the most fuel efficient version of this car. So you've got the base model two liter petrol, which will use 8.1 liters per 100 kilometers. That's the official combined cycle fuel consumption figure, which is what you should be able to achieve across a mix of driving. And look, I think you're gonna see higher than that because you have to ask a fair bit more of that engine. In my experience in that car, at least, that's the case. Then there's the turbo petrol version. Its official combined cycle fuel consumption figure is 7.2 liters per 100 Ks. Uh, you're gonna see a little bit higher than that in real world driving, I would suggest. And then there's this version, the diesel, which has an official figure of 6.3 liters per 100 Ks. You might see that if you do a lot of open road driving, but if you do a lot more in town and urban stuff, then it's probably gonna be closer to eight or nine liters per 100 Ks. The Hyundai Tucson range scored the maximum five star and cap safety rating in 2021. So it's got a lot of the stuff that you would expect for a family midsize SUV. It's got autonomous emergency braking with lane keeping assist and blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert across the entire range, which is good. Oh, that AEB system, it'll do pedestrian detection, uh, cyclist detection, and also junction detection. So it'll stop you from darting in front of other cars if it thinks you won't make that gap. Airbag coverage is pretty good, but there isn't one of those front center airbags that you'll find in some newer SUVs. And it's not saying that it's unsafe, it's just maybe not as safe as some of the others out there. You need to know that it's got a reversing camera and rear parking sensors for all models. If you choose one of the top two versions, then you get front parking sensors. And if you choose the flagship Highlander, you're gonna get a surround view camera. And if you choose the flagship Highlander, but with the diesel engine, it's also got a clever remote parking trick, but I can't show you that because this isn't the Highlander. <laughs> Hyundai offers a five year unlimited kilometer warranty. If you need more, then you can shop around. MG, Kia, they have more, they have seven year warranties. There's also a cap price servicing plan available now Unusually, Hyundai offers a lifetime cap price plan. So you can check online and see what this thing's gonna cost you 15 years into the future to service, which is pretty interesting. But there's also a prepay service plan in three or four or five year increments. Um, unlike some of the other brands out there, there is no discount. So you can see the prices on your screen now for each of the powertrains and what it will cost as an average over five years. Now, the thing you need to know is that the turbo petrol version has 10,000 kilometer service intervals where the other models have 15,000 K intervals. So it could cost you quite a bit more to service if you do a lot of kilometers. If you do service with Hyundai, you get roadside assist for eternity. That's right. If you keep servicing it with Hyundai, they'll keep renewing your roadside assistance. The Hyundai Tucson has so many options to choose from for buyers that it is very, very compelling. However, for me, I think that the diesel and the Elite spec would be the right combination. In fact, I'd even chuck on the N-Line pack just like this car right here. So this is my ideal spec of Tucson. But tell me yours in the comments section below, or would you choose something completely different? I'd love to know what you're thinking. Please do join the community and have your say. Hit like and subscribe, share this video, share this channel. Let's grow this channel to be something different and big as well. I'm looking forward to it. If you are, thanks for watching.